Chiefong, the CCP's ambassador to the United States, who rose to his position by suppressing the protests in Hong Kong, was protested against by the three students, two women and one man, during his speech at the Harvard Kennedy School China Forum on April 20th. These brave students stood up from their seats in the audience and loudly condemned the CCP's actions, including the genocide in Tibet and Xinjiang, the deprivation of freedom in Hong Kong, and the military threats towards Taiwan. The atmosphere at the event instantly became very tense. The entire audience was silent with expressionless faces, likely afraid to show their stance. Hi everyone, this is Stan, your favorite Polish Taiwan YouTuber. Hope you are having a great day. Welcome to today's show. Today, let's discuss how the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, is infiltrating the Western university campuses. People who are concerned about China's growing influence in the world have recently been discussing a news story. Xie Feng, the CCP's ambassador to the United States, who rose to his position by suppressing the protests in Hong Kong, was protested against by the three students, two women and one man, during his speech at the Harvard Kennedy School China Forum on April 20th. These brave students stood up from their seats in the audience and loudly condemned the CCP's actions, including the genocide in Tibet and Xinjiang, the deprivation of freedom in Hong Kong, and the military threats towards Taiwan. The atmosphere at the event instantly became very tense. The entire audience was silent with expressionless faces, likely afraid to show their stance. Some secretly started recording the protesters on their mobile phones. However, one Chinese exchange student, Zhou Hongji, has shown his allegiance to the CCP by forcibly dragging away a Taiwanese female student who was protesting. This incident recalls the actions of the overseas 110, who assist the CCP's regime in capturing and abducting dissidents abroad. It is shocking to see such actions in Harvard, a renowned academic institution, where young CCP supporters willingly become the enforcers of the Chinese state machine in the democratic United States, handling the protesting students with such brutality. Zhou Hongji, who claimed online to be the founder of the World Development Forum and co-chair of the forum at Harvard, was found out to be lying about himself. This is very typical of China, and quite childish actually. Moreover, even though he studies international political economy, yet he probably thinks about international relations as of China decides everything. What do they teach their students in Harvard? After the incident, the two girls spoke to the media, stating that they protested because they could not accept Xie Feng promoting and beautifying the Chinese authoritarian government while being on a campus in the United States. Unacceptable for Harvard to invite somebody who represents a genocidal government who is personally responsible for overseeing um, you know, everything that happened in Hong Kong. Moreover, after being forcibly removed by the Chinese student Zhou Hongji, they felt very scared and worried about their personal safety. Chinese-Canadian journalist Sheng Xue criticized Harvard Kennedy's call on the X platform, formerly known as Twitter, for its long-standing practice of collaborating with the CCP for decades to cultivate successors for the CCP's apparatus. Harvard University has had many cooperative projects with the CCP, having trained at least a thousand people since 1996. The school is even jokingly referred to as the second party school of the CCP Central Committee. She stated that Xie Feng is naturally a mouthpiece for the CCP and Xi Jinping, and he cannot express a differing stance. Harvard University and the Kennedy School should adhere to basic principles of right and wrong and moral ethics, which they unfortunately don't. Over the past few years, numerous incidents involving the CCP student spies, or those people who act like overseas police, have continuously emerged. This also once again discredits the appeasement discourse of the past decades, which assumed that economic development and academic engagement could change the CCP's dictatorship. In fact, it has been very clear over the years that these Chinese students attending prestigious universities in Europe and America are often those who benefit from the CCP system, or are students that have been carefully selected by the CCP. Besides Zhou Hongji in this incident, another example is a 26-year-old Chinese student Wu Xiaolei studying at the Berkeley College of Music in the United States, who was sentenced for harassing a pro-democracy student. In 2022, Wu Xiaolei has been sending violent threats to another student at the same school School, who was protesting the CCP's dictatorship. He also threatened to report the student to the public security authorities in China. The district attorney stated that Wu Xiaolei's specific actions might not have been taken under the direction of the CCP's authorities, but he still saw himself as a part of the CCP's censorship and suppression network. Such personal networks extend deep into the United States, bridging the relationships between Chinese Americans and their families in China. Indeed, as the victim feared, Chinese public security repeatedly harassed their father in China. 
Wish Ali was ultimately sentenced by the court to nine months in prison, after which he will be deported and not allowed to return to the United States unless he receives a special approval from the Department of Homeland Security. In January this year, the Federal Court of Canada denied a student visa to a Chinese student Li Yuekang, who graduated from Beijing University of Aeronautics on the grounds of being a potential spy. The Canadian authorities thought that he could be coerced into spying. His alma mater, Beijing University of Aeronautics, is one of the so-called Seven Sons of National Defense under the CCP, closely associated with the Chinese military, and also on the list of the schools sanctioned by the United States. An investigation by Radio Free Asia found that after being labeled as a potential spy by Canada, the student involved immediately deleted his LinkedIn account. And now let's move to Switzerland, which has always been portraying itself as a neutral country, has also recently got some news about Chinese spy students. According to the news from Radio Television Suisse RTS, the Swiss police investigated a Chinese student from Beijing who used an alias David W. This individual purchased an old hotel located next to the Meiringen military airbase in Switzerland and hired his parents, who were fluent in German, to run the business. This military airbase will receive American F-35 fighter jets, and the rooms of the hotel offer a direct view of the takeoff runway, making it an ideal location for surveillance. David and his parents were fined thousands of Swiss francs for staying in Switzerland illegally, operating a hotel and restaurant without a license, and having no work permits. This David is a mysterious person, actually. His presence on social media has been cleaned up, photos deleted, and almost all friend connections removed. Currently, this family has left and their whereabouts are unknown. Additionally, the CCP continuously oppresses and harasses the dissidents in Saichan. According to the latest report released on April 15 by the US-based human rights organization Chinese Human Rights Defenders, the CCP is intensifying its repression of Chinese citizens. In China, political prisoners or dissidents are considered the new black five categories, Xinhei Wu Lei, similar to the period of the Chinese Cultural Revolution, when the five black categories were considered enemies of the state. The children and families of dissidents are also harassed and the CCP employs various methods to deprive the children of opportunities to receive good education and travel abroad. They are also sometimes being sentenced to confinement in psychiatric institutions. On April 16th, the Spanish International Human Rights Organization, Safeguard Defenders, released a report. When they analyzed official written documents from the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection of the Chinese Communist Party, CCDI, they discovered that the CCP's Overseas Police, or 110, besides utilizing transnational abductions, the most common method used by China is persuading targets to return. This is combined with pressure and involvement of relatives in China, as well as directly following the victims, harassment, and threats to targeted individuals by Chinese overseas agents and proxies. This behavior once again proves that even when these student spies reach Western countries, they continue to intimidate and harass groups or individuals who disagree with the CCP's government. At the same time, with Xi Jinping's third term, the control over ideology will become increasingly strict. For instance, starting from January 1st this year, the CCP implemented the Patriotic Education Law. Whether in public or private schools, there is an increased push for patriotic education, and even foreign private schools in China must participate. Xi Jinping was shocked by the resistance of young people in the White Paper Revolution and Hong Kong's anti-extradition law protests. So he feels it's necessary to cultivate more patriotic Chinese youth ideologically, to prevent them from challenging the power of the Communist Party and Xiing the future. In addition, every April 15th, there is the celebration of the National Security Education Day. Therefore, it's not difficult to predict that the proportion of Chinese students going abroad for education while carrying out missions will increase. Democratic countries need to be more cautious about such infiltration. Not to mention Harvard University, which helps the CCP to cultivate its successors in various fields. I think this is as absurd as European and American countries are selling advanced chips to China for missile production. We can also see that the student protests in Europe and in American schools on certain international issues are often instigated by China, Russia and Iran. The issue of campus infiltration may be nearly as severe as the problem of high-tech theft. This is an issue that all of us have to be very serious about. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please press like, subscribe and share. This is Stan. I see you in the next one. Bye bye.